so welcome to my IVIG journey. Um, this is basically the journey to get approved of IVIG um, and how that happened and all the stuff that happened in between that. Um, it's pretty long. Um, it's basically two years with the footage. Um, when you the next clip you see after this is in 2018. So very, very, very long time ago when this started. Um, and it did get approved, but then some stuff happened and that made it take even longer to get to the point of starting, actually starting IVIG. Um, if you haven't already, there, I believe there's two, maybe three, um, uh, videos of this process before this clip. Um, the reason that this is a whole big long video is because it was very repetitive of, like, going to the doctor and finding out nothing. And so I decided to just con condense this into one video. But before we go into the actual video, I do want to say thank you so much for continually supporting me even though I don't post as often as I used to. I'm trying my hardest to post as often as I can. Um, if you want to follow me closer besides just my YouTube videos, I have Patreon. I also have um, Instagram. In my description box there is a T... what is it called? There's some kind of link. A uh, link tree. Link. And it'll link you to all of my social media accounts. And you can follow me on there. Sorry about my refrigerator, but let's get into the video. Okay, so we're on our way to go get my um, blood drawn for the... Um, to test my blood basically after getting the um, pneumonia shot for my hypogammaglobinemia. It's just, um, it's for the insurance so that we know, um, like, we're, I think we were checking, like, if my antibodies are changing or something. Um, be sure to watch my other video before you watch this. I'll put it up here. I'm gonna film, I'm just gonna basically film me getting my blood drawn and then y'all are gonna see me when I actually have my doctor's appointment so I'm gonna save this footage and then put it on top of my other vlog for y'all so you're not waiting because a very short clip of me getting my blood drawn is pretty pointless for a, to make a whole video out of it. We're in the waiting room and I just wanted to let you know that I'm gonna be setting up um, playlists so you can follow like my IVI journey and I also made like a Tourette's playlist and like every kind of doctor that I'm going to I'm gonna section it into its own playlist so that you can watch them and have them in order if that makes sense because when I post them they're not always like in order like there's something in between them sometimes so I just want to make it easier for y'all to <laughs> follow my journey so um if y'all want to watch all of the IV, um, IVIG videos before this one you can um click the playlist that'll be in the description okay you comfortable enough mm -hmm. okay. you're really good at that This vein, too. this vein's good. My other arm, it did, it, so it don't work for nothing anymore. I used it too much when I was a kid, I think. Yeah. <laughs> they kind of do that, build up scar tissue. What's all that noise out there? <laughs> hey, I got the red. It'll match the heart <laughs> in here. Hey, I'm back home. I saw the vampires and they took blood. And um, basically, I'll update you when I go see my actual doctor and talk about the blood work that we just took. So, see you then. Okay, so we just pulled up um, at the oncologist's office. We'll find out today if the pneumonia shot did anything to like my antibodies, I believe it is. We've, there's so much blood work going on right now, it's hard to remember, but, um, yeah, we should have some answers about if I can do IVIG soon, so yay. It's been a few days since that appointment and we literally went in there and we waited for like three hours and then um, he told us, yeah, the insurance hasn't told us anything yet, so um, we're still waiting. We are on our way to um, talk to my oncologist doctor finally. Um, it's Y'all have... This might be a whole nother video by itself. I don't really know. It kind of depends on how long my um, 
other video because I was con including several days into it. So I guess you'll find out when, we're, when you're watching this if it's one or two videos. But we're currently in traffic right now going to um, his office. Apparently we're going a different way. Is There's not normally traffic, is there, Mom? Well, it is a Monday morning. Okay. Oh, you're still in rush hour traffic. I have my heating pad in the car. We have this little blue box that's making it work, but something kind of smells like it's burning, so we're kind of hoping it's not the heating pad. We think it's this because it was underneath the heating pad and it's warm. Kind of smells a little funny. Continue on I-35 e North for two miles. But we're going there. Last time I canceled this appointment because of how much pain I'm in. If I couldn't have gotten a heating pad, I was close to canceling it already because I'm using the heating pad in every single bump and um, sharp turn makes my chest hurt because I'm moving in a certain way and I also have a flare right now so that makes that act up too. But we are going. We're going to find out if they have any information about IVIG, if I can start it or not. It depends on um, how my body acted to this pneumonia shot. So wish us luck. Let's hope that we can get it even though I really don't want to do IVIG for the rest of my life. All that would go away hopefully. So. Um, yeah, that'd be nice. So I'll talk to y'all when we're there. This video is like making me realize how often I wear black t-shirts. Not t-shirts, but tank tops. Like majority of my tank tops are black. When I wear a color, it's very, very rare. It's kind of like you can't really tell it's a different day. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh. Anyway, I'm trying to keep my cool because we went again and I didn't vlog anything because there wasn't really anything to say. But also, he, he was like, we're still waiting on insurance. So we took more blood, and he wanted to check, like, compare that from the last time, you know, to this time. In case they had more, they asked for more blood, we'd have it, I guess. So they took more blood, and, like, literally, we've taken so much blood for this stuff, it's ridiculous. And then when they take blood for me, I always get really dizzy, and then I need to recover. So when I get home, I don't want to feel like, I don't feel like vlogging. And, like, it's... I hope next time we go, they know something about, like, what insurance is saying. Insurance does not want to pay for it. They're going to find every single fucking way to not pay for it. Because IVIG, each, each, um, dose is, like, $10,000. They're not going to want to pay for it. They're just not. And I'm, I'm like, oh my god, like, please keep, keep, just calm down. What's really aggravating about the whole thing is that I have to drive 45 minutes out of our way. My mom has to take off work because there's no way I can drive 45 minutes. Um, I can drive to small appointments like if I go to see my GP I can take myself there. But if, but anyway we go there. We have to wait for four hours to three hours to two hours you know I'm just going backwards but um, however long we have to wait it's longer than a normal doctor's visit because he's taking his time with his patients and he's a very good doctor he's he visits with you and you have like when you're with him specifically in the room he doesn't always feel like you're in a doctor's office which is really nice that's why i like my on oncologist anyway it's like yeah um we don't know anything yet and i'm like holy crap like we spent 45 minutes getting here we spent four hours in the fucking waiting room and then it's going to take me five minutes to tell me that insurance hasn't said yes or no yet. Like, oh my god, insurance is such assholes. So we're going to go back again and find out if um, insurance has said yes or not yet. Um, I don't know when that appointment is going to be, but we'll see what they say. I'm really tired, so I'm trying not to keep my eyes closed. But, yeah. We're still on the journey of finding out if they're going to say yes or no yet. <laughs> hey, so we're going to see Dr. Costa today. He's my hypogammaglobinemia doctor. Um, <laughs> today is supposed to be the day that we are going to find out if I can, t um, if my insurance allows me to have IVIG. Um, <laughs> 
we were supposed to find out a while ago, but then they needed to do another blood test apparently. And then um, we had to cancel a bunch of appointments because with all my appointments with Dr. Suleiman, um, I had to like cancel because of how sick I was and just not able to get there. Um, I'm really out of it today. I don't, I didn't sleep well at all last night. I've been throwing up so much lately that I can't, I just can't take any medication and they've given me a new medication for my POTS that was recently diagnosed. Um, you'll, you might not have had that video yet. I don't know. I might wait to release this video until after y'all know about all the um, tests and their like what we learned from them. But um, I'm kind of in a place where I can't really do anything to benefit myself if I'm always nauseous and I can't take anything if I'm going to throw it up because then I'm already throwing up as it is and adding to that is just going to make my life, um, my life's quality any even lower. And so I'm hoping that maybe they will prescribe something that is um, like a shot or something. I don't know. Something I can't throw up. I don't know if Dr. Costa can do that, but I'm going to ask him today. But let's hope that the insurance allows me to have IVIG because if you always hear when I have my sniffing tick, it always sounds like I'm sick because I always am sick. So I have a sniffing tick, but it, and it aggravates me because it always sounds like I'm sick. And then I'm sure people around me think I'm just, sis, I can't talk, thinks I'm just snucking, s sucking my snot up and I'm not. <laughs> it's just a tick. So, um, <laughs> Let's hope that we get some answers today, and let's hope that if he if he either can give me something that's injectable, or if he can't, he knows who I can go to to try to get that. So fingers crossed. So we're about to wait for the doctor. We just got out, and we're doing more waiting. We thought it would be like yeah, and it's like a Ugh. so we don't know yet. My camera is dying, so this is going to be short and sweet. But um, we went in and we still don't know anything. This time, it wasn't the insurance company. Somebody on the doctor's side didn't do what they were supposed to do. They didn't send in something that the insurance company asked for. So we are waiting again. Um, I don't, we haven't made another appointment though, so I don't know. I think they're gonna call us when they know something. So, um, yeah. But I got something for nausea. I got a patch. It's a Graniston patch. I don't know the, that name but it's a you can see Graniston they use it for people with cancer and I go to an oncologist so um, he gave me this and basically they put this on before um, chemotherapy and then take it off after chemotherapy and then it helps really well and I've already used one the, and it does help the problem is my insurance is only going to cover two a month the rest of the month um, it's six hundred dollars and so I will have two weeks of the month that I'm not throwing up as much. I still throw up on it, but not as much. And so next time I see him, I'm going to try to ask him if he can, like, fix that maybe. I don't know what he can do, but there, it's, a, it's worth a shot because um, it, it would make my um, quality of life better because I would be able to take more meds and be able to keep them down, and it would help a lot. So, we still don't know anything about IVIG, but I did get something for nausea. And I'm kind of like, I don't want to put it on because then I'm going to have a week. The next week, I'm not going to have anything. And then it's going to be like, uh, it's okay, complete shit. Uh, it's okay, complete shit. Um, so, yeah. Um, yep. So, I'm going to talk to you later when I know something else. Bye. We're in the office and it's a lot like um, busier than it normally is, so I feel awkward talking in here. We normally don't, but we're here and we're waiting. So I don't know how long we're gonna wait, but it probably look. It kind of looks like we're gonna be here for a few hours, which really sucks. But I have a heating pad, so I should be as good as I can be. So hopefully we'll know something about the IVIG. I'm in some kind of room because I was throwing up and they had me come back here because, I don't know, it was probably gross having me throw up in the um, hallway. Or not even the hallway, the um, waiting room. I had a, like a throw up bag, but I don't know, this is the first time they've brought me back here. But I'm laying down with my feet up to help with my dizziness. 
Because I really, even though I'm laying down, I feel like I'm going to faint. And I feel like I was going to faint since I've gotten in the car. And everywhere I go is hot. And, um, everywhere, when I go outside, I'm cold to the point where I'm hurting. And then when I go inside, like, a building or something, it's always too hot for me. Because it's, like, everybody has it warmed up for me. I mean, everybody has it warmed up because it's winter. But... I have heat intolerance and I can't handle the hotness that everybody keeps it at. Like even when I'm at home, my room, I always have my window open because my parents have the heat too high for me. <laughs> no! And I keep having a bunch of head ticks and I'm, I have like a small, um, soon to be migraine. So, yeah. But we're waiting for, I don't know if they're going to see me in this room or if we're going to go to a different room, but... We're waiting for answers on something, if I can do like IVIG or not. So I just got done talking with the doctor. Um, the pneumonia shot did nothing for me, so we're gonna put in another request for the insurance company to do the um, IVIG. Um, and so we're probably gonna know in about five weeks um, if they say yes or not. Um, he doesn't know what we'll do if they say no, um, but he looks like he still will be. <laughs> monkeys no he looks like he'll still be wanting to keep trying for at least until there's no options of trying to get the insurance company to say yes goodness so i finally got some good news and apparently i forgot to charge my camera again um i keep vlogging and then i'm like i forget that my camera needs to be charged because it's not like my phone i don't use it constantly but anyway before this thing dies i got approved for ivig <gasps> Yay! I'm so excited. So we didn't go in to find out. I don't know why we had to keep going in to find to find out if it wasn't working, but they finally called us. My camera died. And so anyway, I was I'm like still excited about the fact that it finally got approved. I'm outside because I'm editing out here. I just I don't get to come outside very often and even though I'm not gonna get any like vitamin D or anything. Um I still like to just come out here. It's like a nice mental break. But anyway, as I was saying before my camera rudely died on me, we got approved for IVIG. They called us, and so we didn't have to come in to find out about it. But we have a consultation coming up talking about it because I have um, had um, infusions for my POTS, which I'm just going to let y'all know I've been diagnosed with that. Y'all will see those videos as soon as I can get them out to y'all. Um... I honestly don't know what will happen first. I think this video is probably going to come out first because I'm, I've am i been editing it as I've been putting it together and the other videos are just, they're all hectic um, because half the time when I do those I'm not able to edit when I get back. But normally I bring my laptop to my oncologist because of how long I'm there so I'm editing as I'm filming um, unless I just feel like complete crap. <laughs> Yeah, they approved it. So we have a consultation because I want to um, like talk about a port and all that. And holy crap, um, I we're gonna come in. It's not focusing. Focus. Hello. I can't tell if it's just like yeah. I think it's focused. My camera does not do well in low lighting. So yeah. But anyway, um, it's been approved. We have a consultation set up soon, and. Um, we're going to be talking about a port because I pull out my IVs when I have huge tick attacks and when I have, um, like, when I'm sitting and I have an IV in my arm, it's always in the bend of my arm and they have these same goddamn vein because I only have one vein that'll work. Um, and that makes it always sore because I'm getting blood, like, at least once a week and, um, it's just hectic and it's always always so sore so I'd like to get a port before that happens um, especially because of all the infusions that I was doing because I was doing um, saline infusions that those videos haven't come out yet those videos are gonna take a long t time to edit but yeah we're approved and so we're gonna go talk to him about that because like when the IV I when the IV is stuck in my arm I have a I feel like I can't bend it because every time I bend it the pump stops and um, a two-hour infusion takes six hours for me because every time I get back to the bathroom, like, I would have, I have huge tick attacks. Um, and it's, the reason I have so many tick attacks is because during the majority of the time, 
I'm holding in my tics as best as possible. I also have facial and auditory tics, or like actually they're called vocal tics, but that doesn't matter. Anyway, you get the point. They build up, and then it's it's kind of like shaking a coke constantly, and you keep shaking it. This looks like I'm jacking somebody off. <laughs> um, it, like you keep shaking a coke constantly and then finally eventually the cap's gonna explode and you're gonna have this huge tic tac that's what happens when I infuse and I always have to tape down my arm ridiculously and I'm allergic to the most I'm allergic to most adhesives so yeah not fun so um I don't know if he'll approve a port but I do want to mention it before I even start this because I'm going to be doing this for the rest of my life. I don't really see how I'm going to avoid a port if I'm going to be doing IVIG. So it's either going to happen now or it's going to happen in the future when we're totally 100% fucking forced to do it. And I'd like to do it before I'm forced to do it because if like I have a goddamn immune disorder. If I get an infection, um, I'm going to need IV access some way through an arm if they have to take my port out. So like... I'd like to do that before my veins don't work anymore because I guess they could use your feet, but my feet even tick during a tick attack. And that would cause a lot of um, falling because of having, like, you know, my dad mentioned that. But anyway, it just wouldn't, in other ways, I don't see how it could work. And I don't want a pick line because a pick line would be attached to my arm and they don't last very long. So, we'll see how it goes. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, yeah. Um, until my consultation. Bye. Hello, I'm just starting to vlog now. Um, I've been up since like 3 a.m. vomiting and thankfully I haven't vom vomited since being in the car. So hopefully I don't vomit again. I feel like I have so much to go over with y'all and I don't know like what order to go over it with or like how to do that. So I'm kind of thinking about how I'm gonna um, regurgitate everything. I still haven't finished the video um, like telling y'all that um, IVIG was approved because everything has been so freaking hectic. But, um. Ah! Biscuit! Ah! Biscuit! 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 Ah! Biscuit! I want to go over a port with him. I want to go over um, the sub-Q option of IVIG because I didn't know there was one, but I found out there was. I want to know, I guess, why we're doing IVIG and not the sub-Q, the one that's under the skin, um, which I would have to do it, like, more often, but I could do it at home by myself. And it, I think I might know the answer because he told me why I can't do the IVIG at home is because you don't really know for sure what you're getting is what you're getting. And that might be why he doesn't want to do sub-Q. Or maybe there's a reason of he thinks that I need a, um, my phone will not ever shut up. I forgot what I was saying. Um, I think it might be the fact that maybe I need, like, a, um, stronger version of it. Possibly. I don't know. But Dr. Solomon, which is my EDS doctor, um, by, um, and my POTS doctor, he told me that it'll help with a lot more stuff than just my hypogamma and glottonemia. Um, trying to remember everything I want to go over and not like the fact that my channel is not at all um, up to date is really freaking stressing me out because I have so much stuff to tell y'all but I want to do it in order and if I do it in order I'm really really gonna be behind like I'm gonna be behind forever and that scares me. Watch on. I know, I'm talking about sub-Q though. Do you know what that is? That, and that's why I think that um, the sub-Q won't work. Say hello. I think you can't do it at home because it's still not safe or something. Well yeah, but there's a sub-Q, subcutaneous version that you just poke it on your side and it, you can give it to yourself once a week or however often he thinks I need to give it to me. And that might be cheaper, but it might not work as well. And I, that's what I'm oh, thinking. That's why I'm just going to do it here. So I don't to do it. Either way, I really don't want to have to come up here for infusions. I just really don't want to do that. When I was getting my POTS infusions, every time I had to go, I was like super, super depressed. Because I just don't, didn't want to do it. Um, and 
I really don't want to have to feel that way all the time. I'm sure I'll probably work through it eventually. It's really loud in here. I'm sure I'll probably work through it, but like, I don't really don't want to have to work through it. He's doing what he thinks is best for me right now. Yeah, I know. I don't know if you can hear her, but she's talking to Evan Migraine. But we're still waiting on the doctor. We did talk to the lady about like pricing and all that stuff, and it looks like my insurance is going to cover all of the IBIGs. But that could always change. And they only approved 20 of them. And so each time it looks like we're going to have to keep approving them, which is going to be very, very annoying. Um, but am I the only one that lays on the floor at the doctor? I have no shame. Okay, so the last thing that y'all saw. I was talking about getting a port and um, talking to my doctor about that and um, my mom was actually the one that brought it up to me first. I knew about ports but she knew about ports from a lady at church. I'm really out of breath y'all, I apologize. Um, I was kind of against the idea at first but then the more I thought about it the more um, I was liking the idea. You know you can never really like uh, the idea of a port fully but um, with my Tourette's issues and my veins issues um, and all that stuff and how long an infusion would be for IVIG it started to become more and more enticing I guess you could say and so we talked to my doctor and I actually got approved for a port I believe it was in May of last year um, and this is actually I'm in 2002 2002 where am I at I'm in 2020 now when I'm filming this part of the video so anyway, I went to my POTS doctor after I got approved for my port and we were going to place the port like the next week. But my POTS doctor informed me that with POTS, people that have POTS in ports, they don't mix together well. They um, more than likely will get an infection faster. Every single patient he's had that has had a port has gotten an infection. And Lily is eating right now. I swear I cannot make a video without some noise. It's the air conditioning is constantly on. My cats are making noise, the neighbors' dogs make a noise. I can't do it. It's just impossible. And I try for y'all. I free feed my cat, so I just took her bowl away from her. She won't starve. Um, so basically what I was saying is my oncologist approved the port. He actually thought it was a good idea. Um, and he was like, you know, you're probably gonna need it for something else with all the comorbidities that you have. Um, in this point in time, I did not know that I had DC. Um, sorry about all the breathiness. Um, but anyway, went to the port, went to my POTS doctor, and he's like, that's not a good idea. I'm going to send you to another guy that knows about hypogammaglobinemia. And he suggested the subcutaneous. My oncologist was not good, was not happy with the subcutaneous idea. Um, and I had already brought it up to him when I brought up the port. Based on what... Um, he's done with his research. He saw that the subcutaneous didn't work as well and um, he wanted me to do the IVIG and he was also more comfortable with the IVIG because he had more um, experience with it than the subcutaneous version. Um, but anyway, we still, I still decided like, are you comfortable with me doing the subcutaneous first before we try to get a port? Because we already decided that the IVIG wouldn't work without a port. There's no way I could sit there that long um, and not tick and not make the infusion take forever and cause me mental stress. Um, it'd be harder on the people there trying to get in a, get a vein. And more than likely, I would have to be poked and get one IV and that one be toast and then have to get a second IV. Um, because when I was getting my POTS infusions, that happened several times. And so he's like, okay, we'll try to get it approved. So IVIG was already approved, and it took a year to get to that point. So after I got the IVIG, IVIG approved, we were assuming that getting the subcutaneous version approved wouldn't be that hard. It's actually cheaper. But with my mast cell, I would need to still come into the infusion suite, and I would have to be there for probably about 30, 30 minutes. And they didn't want to pay for my seat there for only 30 minutes. For some reason because like apparently in their mind it made more sense to pay for the seat at the infusion center basically and the IVIG um and also for as long as I would be there because like you can't just book the seat for 30 minutes I don't think or something like that I don't really understand at all um but basically they said no 
and we tried for months and months and months we tried for i think i think it was six months actually we tried on top of the year that it already took and then i finally went and found out that i had dc and the eds too like those two were confirmed and so i went to a, a doctor in houston and we found out that the ivig would be a really good idea over the subcutaneous version and she's like you need to go ahead and get a port with your dc you're most likely going to need a port anyway so might as well not screw yourself over and just get it now um she's like you're probably going to get an infection but the risk versus the benefit is there um and so yes my pops doctor was not keen on the idea and i did try to avoid the port because you know if i didn't have to go through the surgery then fucking yes you know um but we ended up deciding to get the port and that's what the scar is thankfully i'm actually thankful that i don't have a bump on me i just have the scar which i'll show you right there that's the scar it has been a month since i've gotten it now um and i actually have already had my first ivig infusion which i kind of vlogged a little bit um i didn't vlog as much as i should but it'll become a vlog eventually um and i'll tell you how that went um after this video um this is now been two years worth of just fighting with insurance and trying to do the best thing for my body and it ended up getting a port um and yeah um so we got IVG approved finally and i ended up getting a port which i still have mixed feelings about but it's in my body and so far i've reacted well i'm healing a little slower than expected but I don't have an infection which is great um and yeah um one thing i did know about getting a port is that i don't ever want to do my um port care um i'm just not keen on that idea um with the shots i did okay but i still forgot small steps you can't forget steps when you're doing a port like if i'm nervous i'm anxious i'm trying to hurry up because i don't want to tick um, all those things can't happen when you're accessing a central line. It's just it's just not going to work. Um, and so um, I get access once a month is what the, the thing will be. Um, and we're probably going to end up having to add saline infusions with the IVIG just to help with the side effects. Because I do get migraines. It does affect my joint pain. Um, and I do get really fatigued afterwards. And we're, I'm hoping that if we add saline infusions... To the mix that that will help um and so when i see my doctor next i think i have one more infusion um and then i'll see him i might try to see him first and get that switched because it wasn't fun but um yeah so ivig is approved and i guess the next video you will see will either be uh, my trip down to houston or my IVIG video. I haven't decided yet. And then I also need to get like. I really need to get my pods and vision videos out. Which happened in 2019. So I'm going to start putting the year. Of when videos were created I guess. I really really appreciate y'all sticking with me. With how long. Um, and how behind I am. And how long it takes me to get a video out. It's obnoxious. But. Um. Filming and editing is really hard when you're fatigued and all that stuff. So I am trying. So I really appreciate y'all sticking with me. But as always, remember you know your body better than anybody else. So please listen to it. And thank you for staying alive. I love you and I'll see you next time. Whenever that is.